And Father God, I pray that you will send your spirit of revelation and spirit of love and spirit of life and saturate our hearts. Right now, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, yeah, the title of my thesis is The Good, the Bad, and the Jealous. <laughs> Understanding the jealousy of God and falling jealously in love with Him. So there were two trees in the Garden of Eden, in the midst of the garden. The trees of the knowledge of good and evil and the trees of life. Adam, uh, we mankind through Adam had chosen the trees of knowledge of good and evil. So the mankind only know to live by the reasoning of between good or bad. So unfortunately and sadly, even a Christian, we, uh, some or many Christians, they decide to live by the reasoning of what is good and what is bad. There is nothing wrong to be a good person, but there is a higher standard for us. So when we do the crusades or when Christians do a crusades or meetings or any kinds of services, so uh, sadly, some or many Christians, they decide by the good idea. So the, the people fall short of the glory, so they are labeled as the bad. But religion of this world teach people to become the good person, so there are second groups of people called the good. But there is a third group of people arising. They are the born again people, born again Christian. We also choose the trees of life. The trees of life is not just about the eternal life. It is about our daily life. And so it's a God kind of life. There is vibrantly living inside of us. Is that in when I say about the we 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 ought to live by the fruits of the trees of life is like. We have to live through the love of God and the voice of God and the spirit of God. If daily we choose to eat the fruits of the trees of life. So, uh, <laughs> so when I talk about God and in the scripture, we clearly see that uh, in Deuteronomy 4.24, that for the Lord your God is a consuming fire and a jealous God. So, and in Matthew 5.48 said, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. So, uh, in the perfect in Greek word literally means perfect. So, in other words, God wants us to be restored into all the attributes of his. Uh, we, we need to be restored into all the attributes of our father in heaven. So there is one of the big, big, big nature of his is that he is a jealous God. So uh, we need to learn what is the jealousy of God and how to fall jealously in love with God. So and also to love the people, the unsaved and the broken with the jealous love of God. When we live by the spirit of life, when I say about the, the fruits of the trees of life, so we need to live by the jealous love of God. So the first part that I want to tell is the jealous love in Trinity, marriage, and blood brothers. So jealousy has both positive and negative meanings, and in negatively it can mean envy, positively it can mean zealousness. But when I say the jealousy of God, in the Hebrew word it is used as kana, and in Greek word it's called as zealous. In other words, jealousy of God is a zealousness of God. So it's not the, the envy. And Marian Webster Dictionary described jealousy as a feeling of unhappiness and anger caused by the belief that a loved one might be unfaithful. So the jealous love of God demands as the faithfulness and loyalty. And uh, I, I want to talk about Trinity a little bit. So Trinity in uh, in First First John chapter. Five, we, we see that there are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So uh, there are literally three persons in the Trinity. So not just one person. Some Christians believe that there is one person manifesting in three forms. So that person manifests as a Father, and then manifests as a Son, and then the Holy Ghost. And they use the metaphor of water, which can exist in the I state, and uh, the water state, and the vapor state. But that is not true. Uh, because the scripture tells us God is, uh, there, is a, there are three persons. And when Jesus Christ prayed to the Father, 
it is not one person praying to oneself. So there are three persons, and so uh, in the scripture we see that these three persons love each other so much. The Father doesn't tolerate when someone grieves the Spirit, and Jesus harshly warned the people not to grieve the Spirit, blasphemy the Spirit. So uh, there is a the jealous love that uh, the nature of the jealous jealous love is a protection. So we can see that they, they protect each other, like so stand for each other. It is uh, one. Uh, so in the scripture, when we see that God is one, and that word one in the Hebrew is ikat, and the Greek word is hand. So it doesn't it 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 doesn't mean the numeric number one. It it doesn't mean that it's a one person. In that ikat or hand, one means that it's a unifying one. So uh, the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they exist in total union. It's a triune God. So three persons living in total union. So they love each other. So that same Hebrews and Greek word described one is used in a marriage, the husband and wife. So they are not literally become the numeric number one, not literally become the one body. But they, 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 they exist and they love and they live in the total unity and so is the Trinity. Uh, for, for me to give the example of the Trinity, the best example is a marriage. And so uh, in a marriage, it demands faithfulness and loyalty. And also in the blood brothers, when I talk about this jealous love and the, the very pure one, the ultimate and precious love, uh, this love transcends the races and blood boundaries and everything and it can exist between the spiritual father and son it can exist between the root and naomi and david and jonathan paul and timothy elijah and elisha and barnabas and john mark so uh the sex is a physical tie between the husband and the wife and the the love between the blood brother are the soul tie but the the tie between the divinity and our humanity is a spiritual time. It is called worship. So we must worship God in spirit, not, not just with all our heart. The scripture tells us we, we have to love God with all our hearts, but it doesn't say we must worship God with, with all our hearts. It means that it's beyond with all our hearts. It's in spirit. So uh, it comes from the deepest self of us, and it's beyond music. And worship extends... Uh, all the boundary and it is a spiritual tie between our God and us. So it demands faithfulness. Well, so uh, I want to proceed to the the second topic is a divide jealous love is a unique value of Christianity. So I want to talk a little bit about the Eastern philosophy as I live in the East. In the East, uh, the we we live by our own philosophical ideas or who God is. And so, uh, especially in the Buddhism, I want to talk a little bit about Buddhism and the core value of Buddhism. The essence of the, the Buddha teaching can be summed up into two principles, the four noble truths and the noble eightfold parts. The four noble truths cover the side of doctrine, the noble eightfold part cover the side of discipline. In the noble eightfold part, one of them is right intention in the right intention renunciation is the first practice of right intention in other words in buddhism we must renounce everything to be free from the cycle of reincarnation in buddhism teaching one requirement for ending the cycle of reincarnation is extinguishing the fire of attachment so Gautama Buddha practiced and taught this so uh so god or Buddha in the views of Buddhism is the one without attachment. So literally the people in the Buddhist community, they literally go into the forest to renounce everything. So they, they must detach from everything. So as, as the children and the family and even the dogs and the pets. So uh, in Buddhist teaching, if I love my dog so much, in, uh, I cannot be out of the cycles of reincarnation. In the next life, I will reincarnate into a life that I'm re uh, I can be related to the dog that I love so much. And so, uh, so uh, in my country, the people 
used to tell that our God, that the Christian God cannot be God because it is very relational. It's a jealous God. It's very relational. Often he described himself as a husband and the bridegroom, the father, and many other things, relational things. So, uh, so uh, it is a stumbling block for the Eastern philosophy that God can be a relational and jealous God. So that's why I pray into this thesis and I wrote this thesis that to explain how good is a jealous love of God and how good is to fall jealously in love with God. So divine jealous love is a unique value of Christianity. In Christianity, God is so jealous that he kept covenant with his people for faithful possession of each other throughout the history. God jealously loved Israelites as his peculiar treasure. God is a consuming fire full of zeal for his people. So uh, many of my Buddhist friends ask me, uh, it seems like the Christian God is so selfish because he, he, he wants to possess people. Like uh, you must not worship other God, uh, that kind of thing. So, so for me to explain is our God is not selfish as, at all because he is the one who sacrificed everything in this love relationship. So we are not the one who sacrificed everything. So he, uh, he has chosen to cut covenant with his people, sacrificing himself on the cross. He has chosen to marry his people to become one. He vowed that he would never leave his people. He loved his people with an everlasting love. He wants to fall jealously in love with his people. There is only one requirement for him uh, uh, to us. Uh, he, he, he said in the great commandment that it's only love from us. So he wants to fall jealously in love with us because he loves us. He doesn't want to follow other gods and other lovers because uh, the other gods and other lovers will abuse us and destroy us and betray us. So for the sake of us, for the sake of protection, for, for, for us, for the sake of us, he, uh, he in his jealous love, came down to us to save us and cut a covenant with us. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. And there are five languages of love. Gift giving, quality time, word of affirmation, out of service, and physical touch. Gift giving, our God gave us many gifts. And so there are nine spiritual gifts and there are many, many, many other things. But uh, in, in the religions, in different religions of the world, I've never had somebody claim that he is in, so in love, jealousy in love with his God. And so they can be very zealous for their God in submission, in obedience, but I've never had anybody claim that my God loved me so much and I, I love him so much. And so... A different religion gives the people the philosophy, doctrine, teaching, and spiritual practices. Our God not only gives us the doctrine, teaching, and spiritual practices, what is unique in Christianity is He gives us love. And so, uh, 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 I love this. <laughs> I don't know. How... <laughs> yeah, so it's the first language of love. He gives us love. And suddenly he gave us his quality time. Yes, of course, he is there for us always. And he, he never sleeps or slumber. And we can access to his presence 24-7. And also he gave us the word of affirmation. He, the whole Bible is filled, filled with uh, the God is telling us God loves us. And as of service, he serves us in humility and the physical touch. God is spirit, so it's not a physical touch. It's a spiritual touch for him. So uh, he... He proved his love through the five languages of love. And the thirdly, I want to tell is, um, oh, forsaking the first love, the way to failures of relationship. Yeah, the church in Ephesus has lost the first love, sadly. And also King Saul, when after he committed sin by sacrificing himself, uh, not uh, by doing sacrifice by himself, and so Samuel came and rebuked him. And so he, he told to Samuel in 1 Samuel 15, 30 that, I've sinned, yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me and that I may worship the Lord your God. So uh, he only concerned about his fame and his name and the people of Israel. 
he never concerned about God. And he, he, he also did use the Lord your God, not the Lord my God or our God. Is the God of Israel is not the God of Saul anymore. It's a God of Samuel. So he lost his first love. And so God will never force somebody to love him jealously. Jealous love, the way to failures of relationship is like, I have had a many story about the, the painful story about the divorce after many years of marriage. And so when somebody left out and lost a first love, it is a, the way to failures of relationship. The relationship cannot survive. So Saul, King Saul has failed God in that jealous relationship. And also Jehoahaz, king of Israel, he was instructed by Elisha to strike, uh, to smite the arrows to the ground. So he only smitten three times. He only smoked three times. So I, I believe he should have smitten one, uh, uh, the arrows are broken to, into the pieces or what all the prophet told him to stop. He should have been je uh, jealous and passionate. The jealous love is passionate. When the, that passion disappear, after the first love disappear, relationship will survive. So for, I want to talk about Moses and David a little bit. No limit beyond ready get. So Moses did want to see the face of God face to face. But on that day, God rejected his desire. He only saw the back of God. But later in Deuteronomy 34.10, it said, uh, after, uh, after Moses went home to be with the Lord. <laughs> so it summarized his life in Deuteronomy 34.10 there. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The word knew in Hebrew literally also means he see face to face. And number 12.8 also said, with him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the Similitude of the Lord shall he be held, behold. So is uh, the Lord is rebuking Miriam and Aaron. He is diff, uh, like Moses is different from other prophets. He is not just seeing God in the vision. Uh, he he speak God mouth to mouth, and he behold the simil, similitude of the Lord. The, so later God may have allowed him to behold him face to face and. So I want to tell when I talk about the jealous love is beyond it is beyond the limit. So our story never ends at one point. So Moses was stubborn to enter into the promised land. So it was a very stumbling block for him. All of his life there is one there is one vision to enter the promised land, to lead the people into the promised land. So it was a breaking point for him and but Anyway, 1,500 years later, when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses was summoned to step onto the Promised Land. So, and he was talking with Jesus about the departure, the departure of Jesus from the earth. Departure in the Greek word means ex ex exodus, and is exodus the same. So, it, it reminded Moses about the previous story. So, one story, the story of Moses didn't end when we die on earth. So it's very interesting that the jealous love extends beyond the boundary. It is no limit and it's beyond ready yet. And also David. <laughs> so that, yeah. David made many mistakes. And when the Lord punished his son through the wife of Uriah, David didn't hold a grudge toward God. And it is because he jealously loved God. And like other kings of Judah and Israel, the kings of Judah and Israel have grudged toward God and the men of God. So, and then later, David made a mistake by taking census. It is very interesting in 2 Samuel 24, 16, it is written that, when the avenging angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, so the Lord relented from the disaster and said to the angel who destroyed the people, it is enough. So it is very interesting. So the Lord chose them three days of destruction, slaughtering the people.
to the whole nations of Israel. So the angel slaughtered the people from one town to another, from one village to another, from one city to another. But when he was about to destroy Jerusalem, God relented. It means God repented. It's like God, God is like, oh, what have I done? So God judged for the mistake of David, but God has also have inner struggle. He jealously loved David so much. David jealously loved God so much. So he, he didn't want David to see the people die right before his eyes because David was already grieved when he had the news that people are dying in other towns and villages. David was in extreme grief. So God, in his jealous love, he, he became very emotional and tender. And so he said, it is enough. It is enough. It is enough. So uh, it should be fair and square. All the people in all the city, I mean that when God punished one town, the another town should be punished too. So, but favor isn't fair. The people of Jerusalem were spared due to the presence of David. So it is a divine jealous love because David pursued God. He is a man after God's own heart. In other words, he, is, he was chasing God's heart. In other words, whenever God has goal, there, there was David. God, <laughs> there was David all the time chasing God's heart. And so that's why God is so uh, suffer from the homesick of David's chance. He, he doesn't want the multi-billion billion dollar wood, the temple of Solomon, or the, the blueprint of heaven, the tabernacle of Moses. He, he, in his jealous love, opened his heart and tell us, I will rebuild the tent of David. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, it seemed like God, uh, God, is, God was very happy living in the tent of David. So the imperfect, frail tent. So it is about the the most high divinity fall jealously in love, so intense, so hard in love with frail humanity. So, so I talk about the failures of relationship, forsaking the first love. But I will continue the story with another topic, the Alpha and Omega in the jealous love. Our God is Alpha and Omega. He is not just the Alpha and Omega. He is my Alpha and my Omega, our Alpha and our Omega. In other words, he is our beginning and our end. So we don't want to put aside, we don't want to be ignored. No one uh, wants to be the last choice of other people. So but we people, we choose many other things. But when we are stuck in the dead end streets of our own personal life, we turn to God. So is it okay for God <laughs> but, yeah, Jeremiah 3, 1 says, If a man divorce his wife, and he leave him and marry another man, shall he return to her again? Will not the land be completely defiled, but you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers? Would you now return to me, declare the Lord? It is okay for God. Uh, it, if he is cho chosen as the last choice, the end, the omega, one, People are so much broken and stuck in the dead entry. I don't mean that people sh should not honor God. And I, I mean that when we are stuck in our dead entry, there he is, because he is our end. He is, there he is, he is our omega. And then he is also the alpha. He will give us a beginning, a new beginning. So the, in the scripture, we see that God's giving people into the new beginning. He, he gave a new beginning to Simon into Peter, Jacob into Israel, Abraham into Abraham, and Sarai into Sarai. And he always gave people into the new beginning. And so, yeah. And the, the other scripture is in Hebrew is, uh, is tell us, he is the author and finisher of our faith. When, when we use about the word author and finisher, it is not a one-time event. Uh, it is not like a belief. When, when we use the word faith, it is not like a belief or one-time statement, it's a lifetime. And he is the author and the finisher of our faith. It is interesting in the Greek word, that faith is used in a pistis, in Greek word. It also means fidelity. In other words, he is the author and finisher of our fidelity. We, we, we were led astray into other level. And when, the, when we have the broken foundation, we don't know how to live uh, in the jealous love with God, in the faithful relationship with God. But 
He is the author and finisher of our fidelity. He will give us a new life, a new foundation, so that we will be falling jealously in love with him in faithfulness, big time, big time, real deal. <laughs> so, and here's, here's our new beginning. In the book of Ezekiel, we also see that they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts, therefore prophesy and say unto them, that said the Lord of God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up and out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And yeah, so it is about the dry bone becoming an army. It's about new life. Yeah, conclusion. <laughs> yeah, I will conclude. God proved his jealous love on a cross. People of God and Christian mothers throughout the history proved their jealous love toward God by sacrificing all of them so by radically living for God and or dying for God. So there is something invisible, but something very tangible. It is beyond the reasoning, living by reasoning of the good and the bad. They are not the kinds of people the, in the world standard. They cannot be as the good people or the bad people. It is the kinds of foolishness in the eyes of some people of the world, but it is not the kinds of foolishness that harms other people, that terrorize other people in their zeal. So when we talk about zeal, the people can be zealous in a good way or a bad way, but we are not operate by zeal alone. We operate by zealous love. And so the motivation is a love toward God. And the jealous so that that group of people arising, I will label them as the jealous, the jealous lover. The jealous live radical lives for God and for the sake of the world. They prove that they are the happiest people living on earth as they live their lives in the arms of the jealous love with God, in the arms of the jealous God. It is the ultimate relationship which serves in finite fuel for their powerful lives. Men and women of God prove the joy of living a life sold out to God rather than living by philosophy of this world and different religion. It is voted to live a life that has a tangible personal relationship with the one and true God who loves jealously. So always this word remind me is a word of the famous jealous lover called Paul the Apostle. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. It's in Second Corinthians eleven two. So to conclude it, <laughs> so I want to show it. Yeah, sure, sure. Picture uh, the cover of my. Yes, it's the cover of my book. I don't know how the screen share is. Okay, anyway. here, share screen. So uh, I hope you see the the photo. And so it's a man standing in the sea, so stretching out his arms are open toward the heaven. So oh, I don't know how to stop screen sharing. <laughs> it's funny. Oh. Yeah. Stop share. Yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> for me personally, it is worth to live a life in a very tangible relationship in jealously with God. Even the persecution we grow because of this jealous love. So in the book, in uh, Romans 8, it tells us, we are more than a conqueror through Christ who love us. We are more, in all these things, we are more than a conqueror in him who love us. It doesn't say who <clears throat> empower us. It simply say who love us. Is I believe this, this strength, this power is the jealous love. So. Uh, <clears throat> when we feel persecuted and in a difficult moment, we we need we need to be embraced by this. We need to be hold tight by the arms of the, the jealous lover, the jealous God. So much more. So life is not worth to live by detachment. Life is worth to live with the big, big, big lover, the jealous God. To to go anywhere that he will go and to do anything that he will ask and to live radically for him. We have only one life, 
friends. And so we ought to live radically in a heroic life to go to the front line or anywhere that God sent us and to live for him. So that's all. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much. Love you all.